Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Jane Healy join me. Welcome, Jane. Thank you for having me. This is great. So a little bit about Jane. Um, Jane is the Amazon Charts and Washington Post best-selling author of The Beantown Girls and the Saturday Evening Girls Club. And her latest novel is The Secret Stealers, which um, I was saying to Jane before, I recently finished reading it and really, really loved it. It was a great read um, about a great um, woman. It's good to read st stories about women in history who have done great things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, when her daughters were young, Jane Healy left a career in high tech to fulfill her dream of writing historical fiction about little known women in history. So thanks again, Jane, for joining us. Just wondering if you want to start off by telling us a little bit about The Secret Stealers. And also, sure, do you have yeah. a copy there that you can... I read it on um, Kindle, so I haven't got my one to share. Yep. Yes, and thank you for letting me run upstairs and get my copy. <laughs> I'm a bad author. I didn't even have a copy with me. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me, Jackie. I'm I'm thrilled to be here tonight. So, The Secret Stealers is my third novel, and um, I keep kind of a running file of possible ideas for stories. Um, and I came across this article about these two women in a, a retirement community outside of Washington, D.C. This was this article was about 15, 20 years old. And they moved in next door to each other. And one was 88 or so, one was like 92. They became very close friends. And they found out that they, they both worked for the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, oh, um, wow. during World War II. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so they never met each other they both went on to the, the oss was the precursor to the cia so it was a, kind of the first american spy organization mm. and they never met each other because one of them was stationed in china and one of them was stationed in italy um and so i read that article and i i knew that you know the soe the british soe had female spies mm. i wasn't aware of any american female spies any american women who went undercover overseas during the war and so um, the more I dug into their stories and the stories of these other women who were part of the OSS, um, the more intrigued I was. And mm. actually, Doris and Betty, the two women who the article was about, Betty wrote a memoir called Sisterhood of Spies. Elizabeth McIntosh is her oh, name. Okay. Mm. And, and she interviewed many of the women who worked in Washington, D.C., and some who worked abroad including um, Julia Child, the chef, um, oh, okay. who was Julia McWilliams mm -hmm. at the time when she was young. She worked for the OSS in D.C. and then in um, Sri Lanka and China. And so um, so I knew once I read Betty's memoir that there was enough there there to, mm -hmm. to write a novel about it. And that was kind of a jumping off point for my research. And um, the story's main character, um, Anna Kavanaugh, is... Um, fictional, but she but she's a composite based on many of the women I read about in mm. the OSS. Mm. And were you you ha did you have the chance to meet any of them or? No, I think most of them have passed at this yeah. point. You know, okay. um, yeah, because Betty because Betty and and Doris were you know late eighties, early nineties, and the article was from fifteen twenty years ago. Oh, so yeah, okay. I think most yeah, of them are yeah, yeah are not are no longer with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and. What, um, how did you find out about them at first? What was the first thing that? Um, the, that article, and then there was another article, and the, both were from the Washington Post. Um, it was about another woman. Her name was Steph Stephanie Czech mm. Rader, who um, also worked for the OSS in Poland. She, her, she was the daughter of Polish immigrants to America, and she was incredibly bright and bilingual. And um, the OSS recruited her to work, um, you know, her cover story was she was working as a, as a secretary in, in the Polish, in the American embassy in, in Poland, mm. um, but she was really a spy with the OSS. So mm. between the, those three women are, were kind of like my jumping off point for the story. Yeah. And did you just happen to come across it when you were researching something else or you were actually out looking for new stories you know, or? I, that's an excellent question actually i i was trying to think about that the other day i 
I um I think I just came across one of the articles and I was like, oh, mm. that's interesting. I'm like, and you know what? I think it's it's an, when you get that spark of an idea and yeah. you're like, well, I find this fascinating. I I think hopefully other people will find it interesting as well. Mm. Um, and it was that was one of, one of the ones those two articles I filed away because I'm like. Has someone has to have written about these women, like written a novel, because yeah. their stories are are so amazing. Um, and I, at the time, there has been since since I wrote this, but at the time I couldn't find anything really. So mm-hmm. um, I knew that that was kind of what I wanted my next project to be. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Um, and can you tell us a bit about um, how you became a writer? Is it something that you'd thought growing up that you always wanted to do? It is. It is mm-hmm. absolutely something I've always wanted to do. But, um, you know, I think that life gets into the way. And I didn't know, I never, growing up, I never knew someone who, you know, wrote novels for a living, mm-hmm. for a full time job. So I, in the back of my mind, I was always like, well, I'll do this and then I can w- write fiction or I'll do this and then I can try to write my first novel. And, mm-hmm. and then I had my daughters who are um, 19 and 15 now. And, and it was kind of like, when are you going to write this fiction yeah. that you always talk about writing? Mm-hmm. And so that's when I kind of started um, really taking, I think that a lot of people, a lot of women don't give themselves permission to like mm-hmm. take the time to be creative because, you know, I could be working on freelance articles and getting paid or I could mm-hmm. be taking care of my daughters and why, I mean, how can I spend time on this? But I, I finally was like, I found the story of the Saturday evening girls club. It was based on an article I wrote about this group of women in Boston's North End at the turn of the 20th century, and and I it, it wouldn't let go of me, and I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this fiction thing, I better get started yeah. because I, I'm going to be, you know, 70 and really wish <laughs> that I had started at some point. So, so yeah, um, mm. so that's when I really started to take it seriously. Very much in the fringes of my life, though. Still, it took me uh, 10 years to, you know, write and finally get pu- um, the Sarah Evening Girls published. Mm. And could you tell us a bit about your publishing journey, how um, that that happened for you? Yeah, yeah. So um, the first time I s- tried to get the Sarah Evening Girls published, um, I want to say maybe it was around 2015, 2014. And um I stopped counting after about, I, so I mean, if, if for anyone who knows the process, you have to write a letter, query letters to agents and literary agents. And if one of them likes your story enough, your book enough, they will sign you and then they will try to sell your book to a publisher. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, the first time out with Saturday Evening Girls Club, I got a lot of requests for manuscripts and a lot of nice feedback, but ultimately I stopped counting at like 60, 70 rejections, mm. I think it was. It was a lot. Um, so I put it on a shelf and I wrote another book that will never see the light of day because <laughs> it wasn't that good. And, um, and then I feel like, you know, definitely there's trends in fiction and in historical fiction and um uh, there was more of an interest in immigrant women's fiction than when I first had tried to get the Saturday Women and Girls Pu- Club published. So mm. I said, you know, I'm going to try one more time to get this out there and see what I can do. And um, and I'm glad I did because that that was a few years later, but it, it came out in 2017. So um, it took it took a while, but it actually the, the second time out, it it happened. Mm. Mm. And uh, we've got quite a few people watching, so just wanted to say to the people watching, if you've got any questions for Jane, please type them in comments and I'll read them out. Um, Kelly's got a question. She says she absolutely loves reading stories like how you, like yours. Um, she wonders which book in this genre has influenced your writing? Um so I, so many, like there's so m- m- many good mm. historical fiction writers out there nowadays. I would say like, you know, growing up, I really loved Philippa Gregory's books. Like the other Berlin girl is probably mm. one that like really, you know, uh, that was one that just instilled my love for historical fiction even more. Um, mo- more recently, The Nightingale I read oh, yes, by Kristen yeah. Hanna. And mm. I was like, oh, like that is just like, that is just the, the best type of historical fiction it just makes you feel mm. things and you learn about this incredible aspect of history and um yeah so um so many i mean you know now i i'm lucky enough to call a lot of these people that i admire friends so like pam janoff and lauren willig 
and Soraya Lane, who's mm. from your part of the world, mm. and um, yeah, um, Marie Benedict. There's just there's some wonderful historical fiction writers out there now. Mm -hmm. And Kelly wonders which of the characters out of all your books has been the favorite to write. Um, which has been, that's a, it's like picking your ch favorite child. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to think, um, you know, I, I like, oh, so in the Beantown Girls, it's three friends, Fiona, Viv, and Dottie. And I, I liked um, writing Viv because she had a lot of sass. She's mm -hmm. kind of like the opposite of me. <laughs> so that was really, she's very sassy and, um, and you know, really like super confident in herself. And um, at the, so she was fun. I like to, you know, I like characters that have a little bit of an edge and a little cheeky. And, and um, so that was a, that was a fun one, but they're yeah. all, they're all fun in their own way. <laughs> yeah. And I'm wondering with your research, how much research do you, decide that you'll do because there must be a point where like you could keep researching and researching or whether you oh, need yeah. to stop and start writing yes and that's <laughs> it right like I, I mean if i i'd still be researching now and never not yeah. have a book out if i like because you could just keep going because i love that mm. part of it yeah because it's, it's not as hard as the writing part for me so um so yeah i mean with each one I have to submit to my editors before we agree on whether or not they're going to publish it, um, mm. kind of the, a synopsis in the first 30 pages. So just for that, I do quite a bit of research up front just to see, you know, and so I have like kind of a baseline level of research. Mm. And so that takes several months. And then, um, and then before, you know, I'm a big plotter and outliner. So I kind of research and outline at the same time. And then even while I'm writing, it ultimately I'm always kind of looking up like the littler details, right? Like about food and clothing and mm. and the stuff that I love to read about that really enrich a story. So yeah. it's like it's never ending, but there is a point where you say, Okay, I'm I have a deadline. Mm. If I don't jump in, I'm, <laughs> this is never gonna get done in time. Yeah. So so yeah. Mm. And Sharon wonders how you chose your characters' names. Oh, that's an excellent question too. So it kind of, it, it depends, but, um, like I, I often, if they were say, if they're a French character, for instance, and they were born a certain year, I will look up, uh, and in a certain area of France, I will look up really popular names on the birth registries of the mm. year they might've been born, um, uh, in, in France or same with America. Like, and I also, it doesn't always work out, um, but I try to use different letters of the alphabet for every character, so yeah. I don't get so I don't get confused, and the yeah. readers don't get confused. Mm. So <laughs> that's another little tip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And are you working on something new at the moment? Yes. Thank you for asking. So my fourth novel is coming out in March 2023, and this is. It's called The American Actress, mm. and it's biographical fiction. So that's a that's different for me, biographical historical fiction. It's based on a real woman. Her name was Drew Layton Tartier, and she was an American actress in the 30s. She starred in the Charlie Chan movies, which were very popular at the time, and she left it all behind to marry the love of her life, Jacques Tartier, and moved to Paris right when the war started, so mm. 1939. He went off to war, and she ended up being like kind of the first voice of America broadcasting to America from oh, France fuck. about the war. Yeah. And then her life from there was bananas. So she was imprisoned in a zoo outside Paris with oh, several wow. hundred other American women, mm -hmm. um, which is something I had never heard of, but that happened. Um, the Germans said that, oh, um, America isn't imprisoning all, all the German women in, in America, so we're going to do the same over oh. here, which was not true. Mm. Um, and then she faked cancer to get out of prison. Mm. And then she ultimately ended up being um, a critical, she played a critical role in the underground network that got pilots out of occupied territory. So her story is all true, um, and that was challenging in its own way because you really want to get, get it right. But um, mm. it was... It was um, fascinating to learn about, and that um, I'm I'm sending it to the copy editors probably tomorrow. So okay. it's you know it's going to be a while, but um, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, no, that sounds like it's going to be a great one as well. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's great to read about these things that people have done that you've never even heard about before.
because there are so many great people in history. Mm. Um, Kelly wonders if there's a historical fiction, any historical fiction authors other than yourself that you say are must read authors. Um, oh, one that I didn't mention earlier, um, in addition, I, I listed a bunch. Mm. Um, those are all fantastic. Kate Quinn is another one. She's mm. brilliant. Um, and Libby Hawker, and uh, she's great. I had her on a panel along with Amy Runyon and Piper Hewley. They all have books out right now. Um, Libby has The Prophet's Wife. Piper has um, By Her Own Design, and Amy has A School for German Brides. Those are all new and um, and fantastic books, mm. too. Mm. Well, thanks. For so those. many. Too many. Yeah. Like, I know them every time. I'm like, yeah. oh, I forgot another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And do you have any writing rituals? Not really. I, I have realized that um, I think from my many years of uh, freelance writing and deadlines, I'm very, I'm much better, even though it's painful, I'm much better on when I'm on deadline. Mm -hmm. I, it makes me structure my time and, and map out how much I need and when um, in order to hit that deadline. So I would just, yeah, I mean, even though I suffer and complain to my family, <laughs> it's really mm. hard. I definitely seem to um, do better when I'm on de deadline, more productive, mm. more structured to my writing routine. Mm. And do you have a favorite place to write and any favorite snacks or drinks while you're writing? Um, coffee always. Yeah. And, um, you know, I used to, when my girls were little and I was, you know, doing the more carpooling and I mean, I, I got used to writing anywhere. So my daughter was a figure skater and I'd write in skating rinks and, and I'd write in coffee shops and mm. it, it gets you kind of, you realize like you don't need a special time and place, but now I do have an, a home office it used to be the toy room. It's now the home office. <laughs> um, and I really, I really love working in my office at home um, mm. with my cats and my dog and, mm. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and oh, and snacks, coffee yes. and um, coffee and coffee. No, um, <laughs> I love cheese. I love cheese too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what do you hope readers will love about the Secret Stealers? Um, I think I hope they'll love that it's a little bit of a spy thriller. Mm. Um, it's got some great twists that way and. I think I hope, and um, and also um, just learning about this lesser known aspect of of history of women in history. Not only mm -hmm. um, the uh, the women of the OSS, but the women of the SOE and the women of the French Resistance, because there was um, you know there are several women who are incredible heroes of the French Resistance, mm -hmm. and and one of the characters in the book Josette is based on um, on one of the real, uh, real heroes of the resistance, okay. um, mm. Janae Clarence. Yeah. So, mm. so yeah. Mm. And what advice would you like to share for a new writer? Uh, you know, I love that question. I think that one of the things that's really important that we talked, I talked about earlier is like giving yourself permission to be creative and to, to have your writing time, like making your time, whether it's an hour a week or an hour a day, whatever you can fit into your life, um, giving yourself permission to do that. And I also really think publishing is persistence. You know, uh, you just have to keep working and keep knocking on doors um, because every author I know has a story similar to mine where it was, at least most that I know, it's like, Lots of rejections, lots of feedback. Mm. Maybe the first manuscript or second manuscript didn't sell, but the third one did. I think that, um, I think, yeah, publishing is persistence and giving yourself permission and time and space to do the work. Mm. Mm. And what have you found the most difficult part so far of your writing process? Every time, and I, I, I was complaining to a friend the other day, I'm like, I thought the fourth book would be easy. When does it get easy? And it's, yeah. um, the actual, like, drafting of the first draft, um, like, creating something out of nothing is by far the hardest part mm -hmm. for me. Like, I, I love the research. I love the revision process. I love I love it all, but but the the part that's super hard for me is, is that. Is, yeah. Uh, is is the is drafting that first draft mm -hmm. and getting it down and getting all the details the historical details right mm. and are you someone who has a big list of different characters or that you would like for future books or do you just think about that when it's time for the next book 
Yeah, you know, I I have a like running folder of ideas that like mm. sometimes I'll come across something or some some it was really nice because sometimes people will send me articles now and mm. um so yeah I, I mean I um I'm in awe of women like of writers who like you know finish a book turn around start the next one on Monday you know yeah. like, I, I'm not <laughs> like that <laughs> but um but yeah you know I'm always thinking and trying to figure out like what would be the next project mm. and when you've been doing research for your books have you found something that really surprised you that you could share with us oh uh, let me think now that's a great great question um something that surprised me um well, you know, and this isn't really a spoiler, but I, I really loved learning about Julia Child's time in the office, in the OSS. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. it was like a whole other aspect of her and mm. her life and her story. And so I kind of, you know, I, I was like, originally I was going to put her as kind of the main character because I love her so much. And mm. um, she's from Boston area too. And, um, but ultimately, um, decided that it was I, I couldn't figure out how to write her story like that but but yeah I loved learning all those little details um in the in the book there's a couple of letters she writes that to her friends back home that are based on her real letters when she was serving overseas oh, in the yeah. OSS mm. and you could just hear her voice and mm. it because she talks about like we landed in China and it's just like China I, I can't <laughs> I can't imitate that voice, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and she talked all about the food in China and how amazing mm. it was. And yeah, so, um, so that was really fun. Like learning all those little details about her was mm. really, really fun. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. It's been great talking oh, thank to you. you. Um, do you yeah. want to let people know how they can keep in touch with you? Absolutely. So I'm on um, Instagram and Twitter at Healy Jane. I am on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook as much as those two, um, those two social media channels. And my website is janehealy.com, H-E-A-L-E-Y. And, um, and I have a mailing list. I don't really call it a newsletter. It's more um, to let, like, give people updates on when I'm going to have, I have monthly webinars with mm -hmm. different authors or when I have an event coming up, whether it's virtual or in person, um, news about the next book. So, um, so yeah, if, if you join my mailing list or check me out on social media, that would be awesome. Well, and thank, thank you so thank much you. for this opportunity. Yeah, no, thank you. Your thank questions you. were amazing. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks to everyone who joined in as well. Thank you, yes. Thanks. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.